Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about uh, how to use the back drilling command inside the Cadence PCB tools. So first of all, what is back drilling? Back drilling is a manufacturing process that kind of uh, allows us to remove stubs from places through holes of uh, pins and wires um, to improve the electrical performance of high-speed signals. So I've got a little graphical representation here I can just show you. So obviously this is a, a through-hole board. I've got um, a standard kind of pad size and a through-hole here. Um, my connection on the on this through hole pin effectively comes in on this layer here and comes out on this layer here. Um, so I want to remove this stub area. So you can actually do this with a back drill. So the the, the fabricator will drill from the bottom side into this um, using this manufacturing stub length to a, a must not cut layer. So you'll drill through these layers here to remove the stub completely. Um, the drill diameter is obviously slightly bigger than the the back drill start pad. Um, and effectively allows you to drill the hole through. You can have uh, clearances in solder masks and clearances and uh, like keep out areas as well um, to help you when you're doing the back drill command. <clears throat> um, what I would say from a back drill point of view is there are a couple of useful resources to go and look at. So if you actually go to the help and documentation and when the cadence help appears and we just literally just type back drill and return. Um, there's a working with back drilling and we can literally just do a right mouse button here and, and open the PDF and generate a PDF. And this is a, let me just grab the PDF, drag it across. So I've got this uh, best practices working with back drilling. It kind of goes through step by step, kind of the options that you need to do um, to get back drill um, and sort it out and what you need to do um, from using it. So that's one option. Uh, I would recommend having a look at that. So let's, uh, let's just get rid of that. Uh, the other place to look is um, on, on the Cadence support site, so support.cadence.com. If you go to resources and then rapid adoption kits. And again, we can do a search for back drill here. Uh, there's an enhanced back drill um, Allegro PCB editor. And there's a kind of a PDF file. You can actually click on this this zip file, which will download the the same example I'm working through now. So um, quite a useful thing for just have a run through um, and, and maybe copy what I'm doing on the video. Uh, but at least you can get an idea what you need to do. So um, back drilling is uh, you have to start off by telling the tools which uh, nets you need to back drill. This can be done one of two ways. So we can do this from uh, setup constraints. And we need to go to the properties. So let's just go to um, the physical for now. And then we'll open the properties tab. General net properties. There's a back drill max PTH stub length. And you specify this value on a net by net basis for the ones that you wish to back drill. So you can kind of see a list of the, the back drill options here. The alternative is to, um, if you haven't can't see, use the constraint manager option or you don't want to use the constraint manager option, is you actually go to the net based object inside a, the main PCB editor canvas and then do a right mouse button property edit. You can then go and specify the back drill max PTH stub value here as well. So there's two places to go and define the actual value uh, to choose which nets you wish to do. So the back drill itself is stored um, predominantly now inside the pad stack. Um, the old way was to do it on a design basis and uh, you can still do that method but the, the, the more intuitive way now is to use the pad stack. So if we launch pad stack editor so once we've got Padstack Editor open, I'll just go and open a Padstack that's got some uh, back drill on it just to show you. Um, there's a, a drill tab, obviously, which is where your default drill hole will be defined, whether it's plated, non-plated, the diameter size, tolerances, etc. There's a secondary drill tab that allows you to enable the, effectively the back drill, the back drill diameter that you need, the figures, etc. that you want for your NC drill legend. Um, once this is enabled, if you go to the design layers tab, you then also now get a back drill start for the pad diameter, the anti-pad diameter and a back drill clearance effectively for the anti-pad and for the keep out area. I can also get a, uh, a back drill solder mask diameter that can be slightly smaller than the main solder mask that you need. Um, and you would do that on each pad stack that needs uh, the back drill command. Um, I've now effectively got that. So what I'll need to do is just update my pad stacks in this design um, to bring in that back drill information. And the way I'm gonna do that is use the tools, pad stack and uh, refresh. I'm going to use a pad stack list, which I'll just go and browse for. I've got a pad stack list there. Let me just go and open this pad stack list to show you. So this is just a list file, effectively just including the two pad stack names that I want to refresh. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll just go and refresh those pads. 
Uh, and once that's done, let's just hover over one of the pads. We'll do a right mouse button, modify design pad stack. All instances to see pad, pad stack editor again. If we look at the second drill, my back drill is enabled. I've got the back drill defined start and clearance and it's defined on my mask. So there's that square pin there. And if we do the same on this one, you'll see the same. So I've got effectively the, the back drill is defined on the second secondary drill. The design layers show me the back drill start and clearance and the mask layers just showing me the back drill solder mask size. So I'm kind of, I'm good to go and ready to start doing some back drilling information now. So what we'll do is we'll go to the manufacture NC back drill setup and analysis. So when we first get this, um, we get the option to choose effectively the deepest back drill layer from the top and the deepest back drill layer from the bottom. So from the top layer, looking at the visibility pane here, um, what's the deepest layer I can drill back drill down to? I could back drill down to layer nine, and from the bottom I could back drill up to layer two. So let's choose those. So we'll choose layer nine for that one, and layer two for that one, and then we'll click OK. And this then generates the potential back drill pair sets that I could use. So if it's three top to layer two, but I must not cut layer three, top to layer three, but I must not cut layer four, etc., etc. Um, it's going to show me the depth of what that drill is. So if it's using the cross section thickness, the depth from the top layer going all the way down to whatever layer, layer seven, for example, is 2.0651 millimeters. So this is one way to do it. It's gonna give you every single layer pair option. I might not need all these back drill layers, but this is what effectively what it's gonna show me. We can also do this manually. So I'm just gonna do a right mouse button and we'll just delete the pair sets. And then I can manually just go um, enable a pair, or do a new pair set, sorry. Um, so I want to go from the top I want to use pins and buyers, and I want to go to say, let's go to layer four, um, and I want three of these, so I'll just add a three as the layer pair ID, and then I'm going to say layer four, maybe layer six, and maybe layer seven. It's automatically bringing up the must not cut layer, and it's automatically defining the depth based on the cross section. I can add values in here, so I can do a right mouse button, uh, insert a pair, maybe I want to include layer five as well. So you can manually define which uh, layer pairs you need, for your back drilling. Um, once they've done that, you can then just go and enable them and use them going forward. You can also get the tool to do this for you. So let's just, uh, let's not disable, let's just do a, uh, let's delete this pair set. If I use the layer pair initialization option, firstly, I can rerun that initial initialization that I had. So deepest back drill layer from the top and the bottom. If you change the cross section, number of layers in your design, etc., and you want to recalculate that, you can use this option here. Um, I can also use the minimum or the minimize electrical stub length, or minimize layer pairs option to create um, the layer pairs that I need. So I'm just gonna do that and then we'll close. And then this will effectively give me based on um, where I've got tracks on certain layers, it's gonna automatically run the analyze command. So it's giving me the plunges, the layer, the layer pairs that I need. So effectively from top to layer, layer two, top to layer three, top to layer four, and then bottom to these layers here as well. It's effectively done that, it's run the analysis and worked out what which back drill pairs I need. Um, if I actually run the anal analyze command again, which effectively gives you the calculation for the number of plunges, what it does is it starts to give you the information. So the manufacturing stub length, the oversize, um, what layers from and to that you're going from and to, the depth, all the information that you need. So there's the cross section information. It's then telling me I, I effectively, so I'm gonna have um, five from the from the top, to layer two, so two from layer two, three from layer four, and then 153 from the bottom, and it's given me those layers as well. Now what you can do, because back drilling is obviously another manufacturing process, there could be some expense involved in here, you can actually start to look at the analysis and decide whether you want to remove some of these back drill options. So in this example for here, uh, going to layer four, I've got an extra three, I might be able to change some of the routing to, to minimize the number of back drills that I actually need. And because the report gives me all that information, I can actually look at what's going on here and say these are the back drill options that I've got. So um, the nets that I'm specifically looking for, um, so let's go and get the, uh, so I'm looking effectively for uh, P66 IQL4. This is the one going to layer four, must not cut layer five. Um, let's just zoom in a little bit. I can then click on the, the hyperlink in the report file. Let's just move these out of the way. And it's telling me that this is the via that I'm looking at. I could potentially change this net here from layer six. Yeah, I could change that to layer three without too much problem. So I could do a change to layer layer three. That would effectively remove one of the back drills. Um, this is the next one to layer four. 
So I've got another net. Can I do the same on this one? I can. So let's just uh, use the tab to get the connect line. Right mouse button, change to layer. Let's make that layer three. Um, and then we've got another one as well in this example. That one there, which effectively is this net here. So we can then change to layer layer three. So I've now effectively um, removed those three possibilities for back drilling. So if I come back to the main form again and run analyze, effectively my plunges now is down to zero. Um, my report is up to date. So what I can then do here is effectively just disable having to run that back drill option. I don't need to run that back drill in this command. So I can then say, okay, that's good. I'm good to go. So I can then effectively run my back drill command. So I then enable the back drill command. You can see things like some keep out areas, some labels being added, um, which I'll cover in a little bit more detail um, as we go through this demo. Pass that parameters option gives us the ability to effectively um, add this kind of information to pad stacks um, that don't have the back drill information defined. Um, if we actually click on the details option here, you can see this is a list of the pad sacks um, that we're using without the back drill data. And these are the ones that are using that kind of back drill. So there is an option to kind of use the, this in the back drill process if you wish to. I would probably recommend doing it in the, the, the library pad stack itself, though. That's the way Cades are kind of recommending this option there. There's some flag codes, obviously, from a DRC point of way uh, point of view to just get some idea about which uh, which DRCs you need to look at from a back drill. Um, it's worthwhile having a look at the flag codes. So they actually give you when you do some DRCs, you can see and work out which which um, error codes mean what when you're seeing a DRC in relation to back drill. So the drill parameters tab effectively gives us the ability to specify a man manufacturing stub length. This is something that your PCB fabricator will drive and give you the information for. And it's kind of a, a maximum value that he's allowing um, from the must not cut layer to the bottom of the drill. Um, so he may well have a different value for this. So I'm just going to specify a value of what my PCB fabricator has told me. Um, if I then go to the layer pairs tab, you'll notice that the depth effectively is out of date now. And if I click on any of these, what it's telling me is I'm getting some warnings because um, my stub length is too big. So when I add everything together, I'm, I can't effectively adjust the correct layer pair. So the layer pair needs to be adjusted to sort out the must not cut layers correctly. So we can actually do this automatically. If we click OK here, there's actually a user preference. So if we go to setup and user preferences and look under manufacture and drilling, there's an option here called back drill layer pair adjustment. If we hover over it, you'll see a, a summary in the bottom of the user preferences window just to describe what it's actually doing. So we can enable this, this user preference. And then if we go to manufacture NC and back drill analysis again, um, let's just analyze. It's going to give me a warning that it's been adjusted for the, the value here. If we click OK here, you'll notice that the depth values will actually get updated. So I've now got some accurate values using that manufacturing stub length. And I know that I'm going to meet the constraints going forward and the, and the manufacturing rules that my PCB fabricator has given me. So once the back drilling is done, I'm going to start getting some graphical representation on the screen. So you can see if I just zoom in here, I'm effectively getting the keep out area. I'm getting some back drill layer identification. So the back drill layers going from one to two must not cut three and from 10 to eight must not cut layer seven. If we actually look at the setup design parameters option, we've got an enable for back drill holes. So we can actually physically see the back drill hole here. And we can also see the drill labels and you can you can graphically see this representation on the screen, which can really help you when you're looking um, to see the back drills when you're going forward. So because the back drill has been run, let's just label the layer select mode. Let's go and look at, say, the solder mask top. You'll see effectively a slightly smaller opening for the for the hole on a hole that's been back drilled so that the updated value for the solder mask value will be done. Um, this is also going to be the same for plane so that the anti pad value is going to be shown. So it's a dynamic visualization of the back drill hole in any of the layers that we're using. We can also hover over a pin, for example, that's been back drilled, do a right mouse button show element, and the show element data will show us the back drill data for each pin that's got that information on. So uh, again, you're getting all the re relevant information that you require to check out your back drill information is correct. So there are some scenarios, obviously, when you add the back drill, there will be a keep out added. Um, it will void things like copper shapes, but what we won't do is obviously void move positions of, of any C lines that are there. So you can see by adding the back drill, I've effectively created a DRC error or DRC error here. So what I would need to do is obviously come and slide that out the way to clear the, the DRC and resolve the issue. 
Okay, from a manufacturing point of view, we've got um, some output processes we can follow. So if we look at the manufacturer, um, and what we want to look at here is the drill legend. So manufacture NC drill legend. We have the option here to include back drill in the legend file. So if we click OK, we need to make sure that the back drill is up to date first. We're going to need to go to manufacture NC back drill setup and analysis. Back drilling is out of date. It's going to show me there. It's also going to show me this under the display status. Um, you'll see out of date back drills as a new option. So if I click on update back drills, it will take me to the back drill form and I can then rerun the back drill. Let's click OK to that and OK to that. You'll also notice that if you do slide vias, for example, or make any adjustments, so let's just go and do a slide here. We'll slide this via down. This back drill hole effectively gets updated. So if I then go back to the display status command, you'll see that my back drilling is out of date again and I need to update that. Um, to get the, the back drill information resolved. So once I'm, I've got that, I'm ready for my kind of my fabrication data. So manufacture NC drill legend. I can include the back drill. So if I click OK, that will then give me my NC drill charts. And if we then use the move command with the groups enabled, I can then separate my drill charts very, very quickly. Let's put that one there. So you can see that I'm getting my, my box standard top to bottom drill holes and then I'm getting every back drill option that I've got. So top to layer two is giving me the holes that I've got, the must not cut layers, the maximum depths, the manufacturing stub value and the quantity of holes. And it gives me a description that I can then send this out to the PCB fabricator. I can also get a cross section chart, so manufacturing cross section chart. This can also include the back drill span as an enable option here. We click OK and put the back drill chart down. So you can see there's my back drill holes graphically represented in the cross section chart. The back drill information itself will go out and manufacture NC, NC drill. There's an option here to include the back drill and then that, that gets written to the Exelon drill files as you would normally.